Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back to my channel. Here's how I make melodic dubstep. I start with this guitar loop that I found on Splice. Cause if it's melodic, it's gotta be emotional. And what's more emotional than an emo guitar? Add a bass line that follows the root notes of the guitar sample. Boo! Boring bass line! Oh, hello. Good to see you. Make it better! This is good. It's not good. It is good. It's not good. It is. No! <clears throat> move. Move out of the way. Move this here and here. No, that's too complicated. It's not. It is. It's not. Are we really gonna do this again? It's not. Ugh, fine. I'll do it. I add transition notes to keep the bass line interesting. Built some chords from the bass line onto a piano. Using techniques like choral voicing and adding sevenths and ninths, these are the chords. Sauce? Yeah, it's when you move the third semitone of a chord down to its natural second, it sounds neither major or minor, thus adding a neutrality and ambiguity to the sound. Boo, music theory nerd, go back to talking about plugins. <sighs> okay, fine. Add a little saturator and chorus to widen it. It needs a lead that'll eventually become our drop. It's called foreshadowing. And the more you do this, the more your songs will sound unified and complete. I use this arp on a glockenspiel because that's what everyone's doing nowadays. The melody is simple and repetitive. Boo! Boring melody! Listen, if it's too complicated, everything's just gonna clash with everything else. It needs something though. Well, it's easy. I just doubled the octave for a little bit of texture. For drums, pick a stompy kick because you want to feel like you're in an arena the whole time because that's how melodic dubstep does it. And in the intro, the snare is actually not going to be a snare. It's actually a few layered percussions. We want to save the snare for a big drop. Now the drum pattern could be just a simple halftime. But I was feeling spicy for this one and moved a few kicks around to complement the bass line. Layer in some tambourines. and some hats. You've got yourself a loop. Now we're gonna have a build up. No, Ash, this is 2021. All we need is a little snare roll like this. Automate the reverb to make it swell. And reverse a sound like this. From here, we go right into... Dude, that sounded real good. How'd you make it? Well, first you find some awesome dubstep samples like this, then upload it to YouTube and hopefully people will listen. Oh no. What the heck are you doing, Ash? Don't you know about distro, kid? Distro what? You're just gonna upload music and wait for people to come flocking to it? No, it's 2021. We don't do that anymore. That's why with today's sponsor, DistroKid, you can promote using DistroKid's amazing, awesome, built-in tools. Included with your subscription, you get goodies like promo cards to make posting about your fresh new song on social media extra easy. Look at all these designs. And then set up hyperfollow so that you have both a pre-save marketing link within minutes of uploading your music. So next time you're thinking about uploading your music, consider using DistroKid for all the promotional tools available to you. Can I get a discount? Yes, with the VIP link, you get 7% off your first year. As always, thank you, DistroKid, for sponsoring this video. Now, this wouldn't be dubstep without dubstep basses. So I use a respace to make this type of sound. Making sure to set serum to mono and legato so that when you write your notes like this, so this is just going from the E down to the E, and since they're overlapping, you'll get that slide. Add a little bit of fat rack, and use an EQ to cut out the mids because we're going to need all that room. Now, if I was only to use these nasty basses, it would simply be dubstep. But since it's melodic, we can't live without our... I use this preset, which you can download on my Discord for free. And the chords are the same as the intro. 
For this song, I made two different super saws, one pan to the left and one pan to the right. But if you want one chord clip to automatically go to two different left and right channels, all you gotta do is just make three. You can delete this one. Uh, make sure Serum is on the MIDI tracks. You want to pan left and right. Change the first one to chords so you know which one are the chords. Delete Serum. And then you can set both of these ones to chords. Pan them left and right. Set both of your super saws to in. Now, anytime you make a change to this MIDI clip, it'll show up hand left and right on your brand new MIDI tracks. So we could call this super saw left, super saw right. And my recommendation is to take these two, group it into one big saw channel, and this is where you can put all of your effects so that it affects all and everything both channels, both sides, without you having to individually add stuff on each of the left and right channels. Yes, we are doing tutorials within tutorials, now deal with it. Next, we take the root note of the chords and move them to a saw layer, or what I like to call a poop saw, because it's a saw wave that sounds like it's about to poop. run it through the Wombo Combo, AKA OTT Saturator, and I use a mid-side EQ to keep it wide, but cut out the sub lows. Now we layer in the sub to keep it thick. Make sure to set up a side chain on your sub. Mine is using a 1 8 timing so that the eventual kick will have a lot of room to hit and not clash with the sub. Remember that intro arp? Look, it's now the lead. I run a pluck through a lot of distortion. For this song, I used overdrive, but you can use amp and dynamic tube. Those are good choices too. Add some erosion to bring in some noise to a specific frequency. And this frequency shifter is actually being used for automation, automating the frequency and the dry wet as little flourishes throughout the drop. Use smooth operator to clean up the sound. And finally, layer in a Glock for extra transients. Boo, this is just future bass. Is there a difference? Uh, yeah. From the handbook of genre frogs, it clearly states that no melodic dubstep song is complete without glitches. Without it, it is simply future bass. Sure, okay, let's add some glitches then. You could painstakingly make glitches on your own with plugins like Portal, Granulator. It was Granulator 2. Um, this is free on Ableton's. But I'm lazy, so I just found these ones off of Splice. Just a little bit of OTT on them. And I put them where the fills go. Boo, he doesn't even make his own sound. Bruh. Who cares how it's made? If the listener enjoys it, then who cares? Uh, but, 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 what are you gonna say? I'm not a real producer? Uh, no, no. That's what I thought. Anyway. As long as you can get your ideas out, it doesn't matter how you got there. Just enjoy the process of making music. Trust me, you'll have a much better time. Finalize the drum beat so that it complements the saws, adding in that big snare I was talking about. And as a bit of composition fun, this sick riff with distorted leads. and a little glock hit for a fill. And the guitar from the beginning with an auto pan for wobble. Group all your synths together so you can use a sidechain. These are my settings. I recommend Duck because of the crossover feature. It lets all of the low stuff get cut out, but still leave some of the high so that it's not too choppy sounding. And I also use Utilities Gain. I automate that for a even tighter sidechain. The idea is to get the transients hitting as hard as possible. You can also use it to make some really cool swell effects like this. Don't forget the fake out in the middle of the song. And because this is a YouTube tutorial, it needs vocals from a song that was relevant five years ago. But if you want to stay relevant, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. But only if you learn something. And the result is... I've been watching you for some time Can't stop staring at those
about sidechain there's this video over here and a huge shout out to my vips on patreon when you join them you get this here project file now go make some bangers